Hi, I'm here uh, today at the City of Lakes Waldorf School in Minneapolis, and I'm really excited to interview Marty Stewart, the Administrative Director of the school. We are, um, she has teamed up with Marjorie Marturano uh, to co-host two screenings of the pre-release of a film, an award-winning documentary film, Generation Zapped, this weekend. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here. And <laughs> Marty, first of all, uh, Marjorie, if you can just say hi for a minute. Hello, I'm <laughs> so happy to be here and it was, I have a friend that teaches at this Waldorf school and asked him if uh, he thought they might be interested in being a sponsor or allow us to show the film here and he came back with like an immediate yes and now we'll find out why. <laughs> Well, Marty, um, I know that this history actually, or this the school has a very interesting history, actually, with the filmmakers of Generation Zapped, and I'm wondering if you'll just speak to me for a minute about. Uh, I understand they had approached you because the school has been without wireless for about 15 years. Could you just share a little bit of that story, please? Um, yes, and it was actually um, in 2010 when we um, were approached by someone who gave us information about. Um, this concern that led us to make a choice to be a, a Wi-Fi free school in 2011. So it's been about seven years that we've been without Wi-Fi in the building. Well, could you share a little bit about what happened? Or, you know, if you, that was a fascinating story you shared a little bit with us before, if you'd share the kind of how that came to pass. Well, um, this parent um, who was interested in enrolling her child in the school approached our admissions director at the time, Caroline Askew, and asked, whether we would ever consider getting rid of the wireless in the school that we had put in a few years before um, because her own child was extremely sensitive. And so that Caroline, being a curious person, was asking questions and the mother who was an attorney provided volumes of material um, of different studies that had been done and decisions that had been made in other countries about wireless in schools. And so Caroline became very interested, read everything she could read about it, and then we continued to take some steps to have some testing done in our building. And we made a decision collectively as a school that just as a precautionary measure, we would not have the Wi-Fi in our school, um, particularly with a concern around young children since we serve preschool through grade eight. Wow, and what, can you just share a little bit about how that was received um, by you know, other parents and also maybe a little bit about what the impact's been on the school, on the children and the community. Share a little bit about that. Sure, I mean, if you think back just seven or so years ago, there was a lot less conversation and information about mm -hmm. this than there is now. So when we made the decision, it certainly impacted teachers who couldn't you know, use an iPad you know, around the building and people had to kind of plug in and we had just moved into that wireless phase. So people were at first somewhat irritated or you know, it was a bit of a burden. Um, but we already were encouraging parents not to use cell phones in the hallways because we're a very low tech kind of school environment. So it wasn't really um, such a big deal other than maybe parents at board meetings couldn't, you know, take notes or things like that on their, on their computers. But um, overall, uh, I think that people, we kind of kept it a little bit down low that we had made this decision. We weren't really advertising. We're a, Wi-Fi free school at that point because, you know, there's a lot of skepticism. People um, kind of like climate change, perhaps. There's not everyone who wants to think, and nobody wants to think that the things that we're doing every day are negatively impacting our health. But we all realize that there's been very little time um, for any kind of research that can really convince us one way or another what the long-term effects are of these, you know, radio waves or EMF. And so we're, we're just taking a precautionary stance. And certainly when you think that, you know, elementary schools in France or, you know, if, if people, places where they have done a lot of research and whole countries are making these decisions, it certainly got our attention and thought there was no reason why we wouldn't take that precautionary stance on behalf of our students. We are made of atoms, and we react to electromagnetic fields. 
It takes roughly 15 to 20 years for tumors to develop. Cell phones are shortening that to 10 years. You cannot reverse it, you cannot heal it, and, and brain tumors are very difficult to treat. So uh, we need to look at prevention, and prevention is not to be exposed. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and they found five tumors pretty much in the footprint of where the phone used to sit. We know for sure that there is a direct link between cell phones and breast cancer. So the reality is all these young girls that are sticking the cell phone in their bra are doing it without any safety information whatsoever. Every cell of the fetus is getting information from the environment, from the mother. And it's not just their fetus that is super vulnerable. A pregnant woman is more vulnerable than another woman because your immune system is suppressed while you're pregnant. Autism develops due to changes and due to influences in what's called the perinatal period. We see de novo mutations, which is mutations that the babies have that the parents don't have, and that can be caused from genetic damage. What we are witnessing is a real epidemiological change. The classroom context just magnifies any potentially harmful effects that are introduced by this new technology. We focus on the router that is on the ceiling, but we're forgetting to think about all of these 25 additive energy producers in the room. Far exceeds the amount of energy being produced by that single wireless router that's on the ceiling. We've got an analogy of a classroom being the inside of a microwave oven. I would predict that the cancer you're going to see elevated in children is going to be leukemia. We would never mandate spraying a DDT in classrooms, children to ingest lead, and yet we're talking about 2B carcinogens. The district has, has set a threshold of acceptable exposure at 10,000 times lower than the current FCC standards. 25 years ago, when the FCC standards were adopted for thermal effects, we didn't have all of these wireless devices. I look at the World Health Organization, I look at uh, my, my government and the education authorities and the groups like the Department of Health. The wireless industry spends $100 million a year lobbying the Congress. They have very good access to the FCC, so it's really hard to go up against the economic and political power of this industry, even when you have the facts on your side. It's very hard to find truly unpolluted advice. I think zapped is a great word to describe what happens to the human body. You know, you may not hear it, feel it, smell it overtly, but your body does.